Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Jack of All Trades. So I'm gonna be doing a little review here on a sandblaster I got from Amazon. Uh, this is called a Nico Air Sandblaster Gun, uh, part number 30068 Alpha. Uh, so this is a really cheap uh, sandblaster. I thought about making one on my own. Uh, you've seen some of the videos uh, online, like uh, using a Harbor Freight uh, air gun. But uh, I, I need to clean some parts here, so I thought about doing some sandblasting, and uh, this was only 30 bucks, so I figured out why not. Uh, this was the cheaper of the, the two different types that look just like this. And and uh, it's just simply because uh, there's nothing else there. There's no other parts. Uh, it's just the gun. Gravity feed abrasive gun blaster. Pretty simple. Uh, looks like you might be able to order parts if something goes bad. Anyway, uh, basic function, uh, you feed it. There's a little um, air hole at the top, I guess, so it, it can feed down properly. Um, on, off, the nozzle. I guess if it gets clogged, you can unscrew this, pull it out. Not much to it. Okay, and there's a there's a filter screen in there, and uh, looks like it takes regular sized uh, fittings. Yeah, just regular fitting. This is a high volume fitting here. So uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, I want to test this out on my my good air compressor. I have a 30 gallon Craftsman old school with the the separate pump and motor. And it's 100% duty, so it's made for painting. So it should keep up with just about anything I can throw at it. Uh, I know it'll do fine. Uh, but I also want to try out, uh, for some of you who may want to do some, some light sandblasting, but not sure if you can do it with what you have, I'm going to try out my two-gallon, um, I think it's also a Craftsman, two-gallon Craftsman pancake air compressor it's pretty small for airing up tires and you know basic floaties and stuff like that but uh you know i have used it on it with an impact once uh, so it, it it can do some things but not a lot uh but anyway i want to see how effective it is with that as well just for those of you who don't have large air compressors or good ones and uh want to see what your options are so all right, so I almost forgot to mention um, I'm going to be using commercial fine sand. Uh, you can get this at Lowe's. It's a 50 pound bag. It's about four bucks. Uh, you can't beat that. That's pretty cheap, but I guess it is just sand as well, right? So let's see. Is there an easy way to do this on camera? So it looks pretty clean. Uh, there won't be any like filtering, but I do have. Um, I have it set up right now so that I could uh, catch a lot of this sand and we'll see how dirty it is. Uh, I might be able to reuse some of it. It would definitely allow me to do a lot more sandblasting if I could reuse it. So we'll, we'll see where I get with that. Anyway, check it out. All right, here we are outside. I've got things set up. I wanted to show you my setup so you can get an idea of, of what to uh, possibly expect for yourself. Uh, I played with this last night in the garage and I just want to let you know that if you plan to use this indoors, uh, for one, it's going to be really messy. Uh, two, you'll need to make sure you have some kind of breathing protection, possibly even a respirator or at least a dust mask. You're definitely going to want eye protection uh, because you got to get in within a foot of the material you're blasting and you're going to get shot in the face quite a bit from stray sand. So um, definitely eye protection. You need breathing protection, at least a dust mask, maybe a respirator, and for sure, possibly hearing protection if your ears are real sensitive. Uh, so just, just so you know why you need the breathing protection, shooting the sand out here does put a, a dust in the air that you're going to be breathing in. And depending on the type of sand you use, it could be very dangerous. I know sandblasting is one of the, the most dangerous uh, professions that you could have. Uh, so... Uh, that as well as what you're blasting. Uh, you have to think, uh, you know, you you could be blasting rust, paint, God knows how old the paint is, could be lead in it, uh, oil, different, different types of chemicals. So uh, protect your lungs, protect your eyes, protect your ears if you can. Uh, if you do this outside, uh, you get some fresh air flowing, 
a lot of open air, then you might be better off uh, with the minimum of just eye protection. But just, you know, it's just usually better to be safe than sorry, right? So uh, I'll show you what I did last night. So I blasted two heads here. I have some heads from a 1970 Riviera. Uh, these are gonna go on my 455 build. Uh, they both looked exactly the same yesterday. I had soaked them in some simple green and uh, just to break up some of the grease and then I blasted them uh, with the new sandblaster. I can tell you that blasting this entire head here took about 20 minutes. It was super fast. I used my big air compressor so that was probably helpful. Uh, this will get blasted later and uh, what I want to show you today is I'm going to show you a comparison of um, a comparison of a big air compressor and a little air compressor so you can get an idea of if you can use this with your little air compressor or if you definitely need something bigger to get work done. Uh, my theory right now, having not tried it, is that the little air compressor will probably do it. It'll just take twice as long or more. Uh, the big air compressor that I have is 100% duty, It's which means it, it can keep up. I can just use it the entire time the pump's running and it'll still push out 90 PSI at least. So it uh, it does a really good job of keeping up. Now I'm going to be shooting a air, a AC bracket, okay? And I've taped off an area here. We're going to do the uh, the big air compressor on this side and the small one on this side, and we're going to see how it's done. Um, this is my setup. I have uh, just a cardboard box and a little plastic tub to kind of catch the sand. And uh, I would advise possibly, if you can, have an enclosed area so that you have the minimum amount of mess. Uh, since I'm in Florida, this sand can just be swept into the grass and it's going to be fine. Another thing uh, to keep in mind, if you're somebody that maybe wants to, to, wants to recycle the sand, uh, I'll let you know that it is super easy to clean this thing out. So uh, there's a screw here at the end, and then if you open the cap, there's another screw that goes in right here into the shaft. You undo both of those and you can clean out this valve. So if you do get a bunch of trash, uh, in the gun doesn't take five minutes but five minutes to clean it out so that's super nice so far my experiences are that I really like the gun a lot uh, for 30 bucks uh, I'm, I'm super happy with it it did not use a whole lot of sand either so I used probably four or five cups of sand red solo cups of sand last night to blast that entire head and a 50 pound bag uh, that was maybe two pounds of sand so uh, it's very practical in, in that manner. Uh, and I believe you can clean a lot of parts with a 50, 50 pound bag of sand, especially if you reuse your sand. Um, I tried to clog it up last night. I did get it clogged by getting some trash in it from recycling the sand, but it was really just a matter of shaking it out. And then in one instance, I had to run a piece of wire through it, but I mean, it was pretty easy. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do some blasting video here. Uh, we'll show you what we have. Uh, we're going to compare the big air compressor and the little air compressor to see how it works. And I'm just going to put the evidence out there and let you make a decision on your own. Okay, just to give you an idea of what I use here uh, when I'm doing this. Uh, like I said, if you if you are blasting outside, you can probably get away with a dust mask. Uh, I would definitely use a respirator inside. And I'm just going to be using one here outside just uh, out of abundance of caution. Uh, I got some pretty good goggles here uh, with a tight, tight... Uh, enclosure around my face and some hearing protection uh, you could probably do safety glasses uh, but just know it does kick up a lot of sand in your face and that's probably the most unpleasant part when you're you're close to doing it i also want to show you uh, what we're doing here with the comparison uh, so i have a high flow quarter inch nozzle that's going to be tested first with the half inch hose uh, these are all high flow here and uh, or these two are high flow and this is is not uh, ordinary. Uh, you're you're going to see people that are using these or that are more um, using like high high flow impacts or they're using this for sandblasting, um, painting, high demand type stuff. Uh, this is going to be more along the lines uh, of what the typical DIYer is going to have in their house uh, along with th this type of air compressor. So as you can see there is a, a considerable difference in the volume uh, that these can produce. So um, what I'm going to do with my comparison is I'm going to fill each the hopper on the, the sandblasting gun up completely full and I'm going to run one whole hopper 
through and see kind of give you an idea of how long it takes um, and uh, how successful it is and, and that's really the, the main test is, is can a smaller one do it and uh, maybe just to show you you know if you already have the high flow stuff maybe just to show you uh, how capable uh, it is so anyway uh, we're gonna start out with the high flow first and, and blast one side and then uh, we'll do the uh, the short flow All right So uh, as you can see there, uh, there's definitely a little bit of a difference. I can tell you just from controlling um, the gun, uh, I had to sit and wait a little bit longer. Uh, the small air compressor uh, did fine the first few seconds, maybe five, six, seven seconds, uh, was, was keeping up and doing the exact same thing as, as the high flow one was. But then uh, as the compressor would uh, lose volume, uh, then it, you could tell that it wasn't uh, doing the work, uh, the same workload. So uh, it was laborious. Uh, you could get by with doing small projects with it. If you wanted to do a large project with it, uh, I would say you would need to set aside a lot of time to do it because it, it's going to take a while to, to let the compressor catch up. And so you can be pushing out that 90 to 100 PSI or even higher. Uh, to get the most results, the best results. Uh, let's go ahead and see what uh, the difference is. I mean, I think it's pretty, it's pretty easy to see. Um, so you have a much wider steel, uh, silvery steel on this side where it got cleaned uh, all the way down into the, the, the pits. And then you can see on this side, it didn't clean quite as well. Um, this whole thing has dust on it. So it kind of, kind of takes away from the example, but, um, uh, I would say, yeah, like I would say, I, I would recommend it. Uh, it's it's great. I'm going to keep it. Um, I'm going to probably use this quite a bit. I'm going to use high flow um, nozzles and hoses, and it's going to get a lot of work done for me. Uh, for you, those of you who don't have that equipment, uh, you could still use it. Uh, it's going to have a limited uh, capacity for you to be able to, to get the work done. All right, so that's the, the test of the, the Nico uh, Sandblaster there. Uh, I'm using it to help rebuild uh, this Buick behind me. Uh, if you want to see more videos, uh, more DIY stuff, 
more videos on the restoration of this Buick, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like this uh, example and it helped you, please hit the like button and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you. Bye.